Hi, my name is Lars Chernagel, and uh, this is part two on my explanation of some of the equipment that we use in our undersea cable systems to give you, the public, a brief idea of what is, is actually going on. What we have here behind me is what we call our SLTD, which is our submarine line terminating equipment. Uh, to give you just a brief overview of what this is, it's basically taking 10 gig signals and it's combining them into a single optical signal, sending it out, and it's taking that single optical signal that's coming back in and splitting it back out into 10 gig signals. So let me explain that a little bit further. Normally what we have is uh, a, a term that many of you are familiar with or, uh, for such things as an ad drop multiplexer, an ADM. An ADM will put out an STM64 signal, which is the equivalent of a 10 gig signal. That STM64 signal then comes from there, it transmits out of that ADM, it comes over here into, our, into what we call a HIPPO, which is a high performance optical equipment. Uh, our SLTE will have multiple HIPPOs. The HIPPO will take that STM64 signal and it will convert it to a specific wavelength. Uh, for example, 193.000 terahertz. Um, the next HIPPO might be 193.300 terahertz. The next one might be 193.400 terahertz, and so on. And so that's, the per that's what each one of these HIPPOs does. So we take that 10 gig signal in, put it into that HIPPO, that HIPPO converts it into a specific wavelength. Now, for those of you who are trying to understand well, what, this, what we mean by wavelengths, and when, when, I, when I'm saying 193.300 terahertz, you have to think of it in the, the optical spectrum that it's a different color of light. So what we're actually doing is we're changing it to a, different, to a certain light color. So each different color of light is its own wavelength. And then what we do, so is we put all, put all this into all these hippos, we take all of that, and then this is the transmit side, so we're sending these signals outbound towards the cable. So <clears throat> we might have five, let's say, uh, for example, we have six wavelengths. Three of those hippo wavelengths will go into what we call a coupler. The other three will go into another coupler. And that coupler will take and it will combine those three wavelengths into a single optical signal. And then the other three will go into another optical signal. Then we'll take those two optical signals and we'll put them into another coupler. And then with that other coupler, we'll push it out and it'll be one optical signal. So what we've done is we've taken six optical signals or six different wavelengths and combined them into a single optical signal. From there, we pass it through over here to what we call our terminal line amplifiers where we push it, that signal out through our optical pumps and optical amps and it goes from there out to the big tail fiber and then out to the first repeater and out to the other sea, the other sea cable system. Uh, for some of you who are wondering what the output power is here, uh, we can do up to around 16.5 dBm. I think our normal output power that we put out is right around 12 to 13 dBm. Now, that's the transmit side. On the other side of things, we have what we call our receive section. So we have the incoming signal, which is the receive signal. Normally our receive signal is coming in at a lot, a lot uh, lower power than our output. Uh, obviously, if it's, if it's gone for thousands of kilometers, you're not going to have 16.5 dBm. Um, more, the, the, the actual input power is more like around uh, neg 16 to neg, neg 20 dBm. So what it does is it comes into here and it hits our TLA and it pumps that signal up a little bit, give it a little bit more power. And then we run it into what we call dispersion compensation fiber. We have two types. We have a negative and we have a positive. The reason we run it into these dispersion compensation fiber modules is because with optical wavelengths, depending on what the wavelength is, some wavelengths will travel faster than others. So dispersion compensation fiber, by running all of our wavelengths through that, and then coming out of that dispersion compensation fiber into our, filter, our, our splitters, all of our wavelengths are now at the same place. 
we basically made them all even again. So, and, and like I said, that's because wavelengths travel at different speeds. So now we're all even. So now it's going to do the exact opposite that we did when we were transmitting. It's going to hit a splitter and it's going to split it out. And that splitter is going to split it based on certain uh, frequencies, like 193.300. So it'll hit that one and it'll, or it, it, uh, it'll hit those and it'll split. Well, for example, we'll hit couplers and splitters. It'll hit some splitters first. We'll just split the general signals out into, let's say, three signals, and then we'll hit it again, and then we'll split it out into six signals. So basically, we have one big optical signal, and then it goes into what we call a filter. That filter may be 193.300, 193.400, whatever. And that filter is going to filter out everything except for that specific wavelength. And then it's going to pass that wavelength into that hippo. That hippo is going to convert it back into an STM64 and set it back over to that ADM, where we then break it back down into whatever rate we need to break it back down into and set it back over to our customers at the other end. So that's just a brief, a very, very brief overview of what our segment line terminating equipment does. Uh, I can't go into more detail. I'd like to uh, you know, show you how every little piece of it's built out and how everything plugs together, but I don't think our uh, our manufacturers want to have that shown publicly. So I hope that this overview has you have found it helpful and it gives you a little bit better appreciation of exactly what is happening when we put out these optical signals onto an undersea fiber. Thank you.